two years concerning the Bible that you use. As a matter of fact, the translators seem to be the target for all the ridicule. And they don't even know them. There are books that will tell you about the sacrifices that many of these translators made once they were called to service to do the King James Bible. And there is more resistance about the things that they have put on paper as a Bible that we can use and trust than anything else. No other Bibles are mentioned, which are basically glorified commentaries. But the King James Bible, I can tell you, was gone over with a fine tooth comb, and you can trust it. So I just had to get that off my chest. All of a sudden, I saw, see this brochure, and it just kind of like stirred up all these things. We just finished an evangelism um, session at a fair, a county fair there in Walworth County, Wisconsin. And I, this is our, was this our third year, Steve? Is that right? Yeah, okay. Our third year doing this um, little booth here, and they would come up. And I, I have to tell you, at first I was cynical about it. I thought, you know, once in a while, religion, you know, will people keep it? The traffic was amazing. Of course, we had giveaways and all that sort of thing. But the idea of dealing with one soul's, uh, after another, face to face, and all those type of things. It brings the reality of the importance that we're uh, of spreading the gospel. My subject is the ministry of reconciliation. Now, when you use big words like that, God. eyes gloss over, and they, you know, and they kind of like look off into other directions like that. It's like if you had a room someplace and a bunch of people came into the room and they're going to receive some kind of instruction and then walks the old professor and he takes the pipe out of his mouth, knocks the ashes out of it, puts it in his pocket, talks about concepts and precepts and everybody's got their head on their hands taking notes and when it's over, the most exciting thing that they're going to do in the day is go for coffee afterwards. If that comes across the same way, then I've failed. Because this, there's a statement I wrote down. Okay, the knowledge of the ministry of reconciliation is an effective way to know who you are in Christ. And, the, and my question was, when I came to it, and we're going to read this passage in just a bit. When I came to it, I said, why are they using these words, the ministry of reconciliation here. They could have called it other things, but there's a specific plan that the Apostle Paul wrote on these pages concerning reconciliation of, the, of man with God uh, that needs to be known. So without further ado... Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. And can you, can you hear me all right? Everybody okay? Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18. Notice how it starts. And we're going through verse 21. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to Himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto Himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For He hath made Him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank You for the words on a page. We thank You for the words on a page in a book, a book that we can trust in a language that we can understand. 
and that we can communicate and understand that Thy Word is truth. And we just pray that this uh, message will have the impact that it ought to have and that we will rejoice in the knowledge that we have of Him. And we pray this with thanksgiving. In Christ's name, Amen. Okay. I made one comment about the Bible. Here's another one. If I were to engage somebody about the Bible, and I sure hope that I have this opportunity again as I've had in uh, this year and recently in past years, I would say to them, you know, I really like the Bible. And I would uh, hope that they would say, oh, you do, and not walk off, but want to talk about it. Because I would say, you know, the reason I like the Bible so much is that I'm able to see invisible things. That's why I like the Bible. Now, that's a new approach for me because I was always trying to struggle. How can I work the gospel into the contact with somebody else so that they hear it and perhaps even receive it? That's what I want to happen. Because the one-on-one -on -one ministry is vital. And we will see something of that as we go through this passage. So, first of all, I see the word here. He hath given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. Well, if there's a ministry, I can tell you that there's going to have to be a minister. And let's go to uh, hold on to this spot and go to 1 Timothy chapter number 4. There's a whole lot of people that are going to be leaving the ministry or they're going to be leaving the core of believers in the local church. And Paul is there on the ready with this. Um, second, or first Timothy chapter 4. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer if thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, watch out for the devil. Thou shall be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. So we find out that we have a watchkeeper there, a guard, and he's a minister. And that minister is going to be very important. Not only is it going to be a very important for that, but also in the local assembly that he train and bring up those in the faith so that they can be useful in the local assembly for doing the same thing. Okay, let's go back now. Oh, um, I want to take you over to Titus chapter 1. Our Wednesday nights, we're studying through Titus at the Inspiration uh, Center there. And Pastor Ross is leading that. And I tell you, this is a very exciting. Paul comes out swinging right away in Titus chapter 1. And I'm going to read the first three verses. Paul, notice this, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Ray brought that up. He brought up the fact that there's this design. And when there's this design that, that God put this into motion, He had the thought before the world began. But hath in due times manifested His word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. We will find out that that good minister of Jesus Christ is going to be involved in refining his abilities as a preacher, preaching the Word. Okay, so 
What does this all have to do with the ministry of reconciliation? So, we got the minister. We know about the minister and his preaching. And you got to know, you got to have a Bible, you have to have the knowledge, and you have to be prepared, and you're going to shoot those words out there, and you want them to hit hard in the heart. Okay. Um, so I'm going over here now. What is reconciliation? Okay, big word. And once again, it's something that. Could you give me something simple to understand? You know, reconciliation. Okay, so I looked it up. And I have to tell you that that word, for a long time, as far as understanding, I could look it up, and but I didn't understand it very well. I, w- I would give people all kinds of definitions if they a- ever asked about what reconciliation is. Let me see if I can do a better job. You got two entities, whatever. They're unfriendly. Somehow the relationship has been broken, but there's something that has happened and brought them together again. Now, I think of that definition and I say, well, that's just fine. If you accept that definition, that's okay. The problem with just that surface definition that does not go deep enough. And I think we're going to see that as we go through this passage. I'm hoping to be able to transmit that right to you. Okay. Um, Where am I? I'm in the book of Colossians. Don't go there. That's wrong. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Look at the first words there. And all things are of God. Do you see those words? Very important. Now, one of the things that I need to say here is, um, you know, I sound like a complainer because I'm talking about these other Bibles again. And they don't say that. They say all these things are of what God did or something like that. It's all different. What this is is an indicator. It's a window to show you what God's eternal purpose is going to be. This is what it's... You, you can have some theologian come in here and talk about the sovereignty of God using this verse. And that's not what it's talking about. It's talking about something that, that God is going to do with the church, the body of Christ. All things are of God, and I think we'll see it because of the way it's phrased. Okay. All things are of God. Who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation. Okay. Now you see the word reconciliation. So this is my cartoonogram up here. And this is the way I understand it. We saw, and Brother Ray brought this up, in verse 17, let's just back up a little bit there. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Creature, Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Notice the all things there. All things are become new. Okay, the new creature. The individual reconciliation of man to God and God did all the work. And it was an individual thing. Okay, this is going to be just nutshell stuff. I mean, I'm not getting into too deep, just the, so you understand these categories. Um, he's not fooling around here. He really wants us to get a design in our minds about what he's doing in the ministry of reconciliation. So, as we look through this passage, it says, to wit, verse 19, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto Himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Do you see the word the world? Okay. He has brought the world into the picture and made this thing... By the way, what's the problem if if we're talking about reconciliation and a busted relationship. When did that happen with the world? 
And with this one, I'm going back to the garden. You know, I, I'm thinking that's what happened. We got we got a real problem there. We had, uh, for by one man, sin came into the world and broke that relationship. So he has. Sorry about that. He has made the world in a position where it can be saved today. Do you notice when you look at verse 19, it says, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. Who's the there and the them? He's talking about a world. What's he talking about? He is talking about the inhabitants. And that's the big problem. Now, I have... Excuse me while I look through my list. We have this world. I'm going to draw a bigger picture. Okay, that's the world. Um, got a reason for that. <clears throat> what do we know about the world? Number one, it's evil. Try to convince the average person out there that the world is evil. What do you mean? Because out there, there is a veneer of beauty around this whole world. And the inhabitants. And they're trying to be happy. There's a driving force here in the world that keeps the people happy. And it's called love of money. That also is what we are up against in the world. There is the pursuit of happiness with money. By the way, we have an offering box in our church. It sits right there at the back. Pastor Steve makes the announcement. We don't take an offering in our church, but if you'd like to give to the work of the ministry, um, just drop some money in there. We'd appreciate it. Why do we do that? That evil money. It's not the money, folks. We need to pay our bills, turn on the lights, pay the pastor, do all those sort of things. There's a need there for the money. Over here, there's a pursuit for the money. That's in the world. Also, in the world, it's dark outside. It's subject to the power of darkness. Now, this is kind of interesting to me because <clears throat> I can see just fine right now. In fact, for a guy my age, I still don't wear the glasses all the time and all that sort of thing. I feel, I feel myself somewhat fortunate. I can read the stuff here pretty good and all that business. But before I was what is known as justified before a just and holy God... I was in the dark. There is no doubt about that. I couldn't see. Now, how do we see? We see with our hearts through the Spirit that we have here that we can... Who would be interested in the ministry of reconciliation? Why would you spend a beautiful... By the way, is this November 5th? Do you see that out there? And you're inside. Thank God for you. <laughs> You're here because we love to see the faces out there. But there's the power of darkness. And guess what? There's a chief magistrate and he resides in an air pocket up here. And he's got loyal subjects in here. And this guy here has got a title of a prince. 
And he operates all around here. And I'll tell you what, he will pick a fight with you at any time. And he doesn't mind doing it. And he's got all kinds of subtle ways of depressing and distressing you. But that's what the world is like. Um, i got some other things here I want to write. Oh, yeah. I don't want to forget about this. I was, uh, sitting around a um, dining room table, and there was a group, you know, a very small group, about three or four of them. And I said, what is man's big problem? And one little girl over there. I know. Sin! I said, well, bless your heart. You got it. But you know, that's not the answer I was looking for. <laughs> and she got all, you know, all that. I said, no, no, that's great. Remember that. Remember that. But I'm looking for something else. And it's this. It's blindness. Look back at 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Because right alongside of this, there is a God. He is a God of idolatry. Second Corinthians. But if our gospel be hid, verse 3, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commandeth the light to shine out of the darkness. Where do you hear that one before? Genesis chapter 1, right. Hath shined in our hearts, there it is, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is you're going to become an interloper into this world. And you already are, by the way, whether you know it or not. You're going to be trespassing on his property. That's what you do. And you will, but you've got an amazing, Chuck is talking about the weaponized versions, you know, that we've got here. These weaponized uh words that we've got here to, to make you strong and you're going to be casting light into this darkness because you got the light, the gospel of Christ. And so in this ministry of reconciliation, he has made the world savable today and he's not on the hunt for good people. He's on the hunt for enemies. Not to harm them or hurt them or punish them in any way. He wants to save them. And this is a really good ministry that we got going. you looking for the bad guys, of which I used to be one. Okay, so um, th this is part of the ministry of reconciliation. Um, you will have the wisdom of God in your ministry, in your evangelism. So with this ruling magistrate up there, the prince of the power of the air, he's got those subjects who are blinded and in the dark running according to the course of this world. All this stuff right here is enemy territory. And you're in it and it's pretty darn exciting. Excuse the language, sorry. But it is. Now, in the Ministry of Reconciliation also, I should mention, I mentioned these two. Okay, that's uh, just quickly, I don't want to spend a lot of time just to let you know that it's there. It's in Ephesians chapter number 2. Ephesians chapter 2. <clears throat> Something happened about uh, a, the division. There was a division between some really strong religious people and some who didn't know that at all. And in fact, they were enemies to those religious people and vice versa. 
Verse 14, For He is our peace, who hath broken both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in His flesh... Uh, keep this in mind when we get to that verse. Um, he became sin for us. How did He do that? He, having abolished in His flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in the ordinance, for to make in Himself twain one new man, so making peace, and that He might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. And who are they? If you look back up here in verse 11, Wherefore, remember that ye, being in time past, Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. So there are some real antagonism there. And I've got two little cartoon feet, uh, people holding hands. You think, you think that was going... God said it, but are they doing it? Well, you're right. Yeah, I agree. They're not. But what did He say? If you're obedience to the faith, Jew, Gentile... I mean, come on, listen to God. This happened. And he, He's got both of them in there. Okay? Then, I just want to mention this one. We'll go to Colossians chapter number 1 in the ministry of reconciliation. <clears throat> Verse 12 giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Bringing that light. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. That, that sounds like Ephesians chapter 2 there. And hath translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son. In whom we have redemption through His blood the forgiveness of sins. How many sins? All of them. You are going to enter, and the focal point of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19 is the world. You're going to be entering into darkness here, and you're bringing the light. Very exciting stuff. And the, those Poor little people that would come up to our booth and getting those answers wrong and all that sort of thing and we're making them feel like they're the worst thing on the earth. Oh, no, don't feel that way. A lot of, you know, all that sort of thing. What you're dealing with is a soul that's in the dark. A lot of the times, totally in the dark. And we were bringing the light, not by any goodness of our own, but by that Gospel, the Gospel of Christ. Okay. I didn't finish my thought here. Let's go down over here. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by Him were all things created that, on, that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or pr principalities. Uh, what are those titles? Or powers... All things were created by Him and for Him. And He is before all things, and by Him all things consist. And He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things He might have the preeminence. Now, I don't see uh, reconciling there. Let's keep reading. For it pleased the Father that in Him should all fullness dwell, and having made peace through the blood of His cross, by Him to reconcile all things. There's the all things there. Unto Himself. And He's, he's labeled that, as we read from verse 15 on through, what those all things are. All things unto Himself. I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you... It's getting real personal here that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath He reconciled. Brought them together. Thank God for the blood of the cross. And all you're doing is believing the thing. Now, you notice, we're going back now to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Um, you are... 
a group of trespassers because the prince up here is not pleased with your presence. You might have noticed that if you are interacting with the citizens of the world in any way. They don't like you. And they use all kinds of things to keep you at arm's length. Um, they got to take their cat for a walk or something like that. They're in blind. They wouldn't say that if they weren't blind to this. I mean, really. They can't see. Um, after all, what does that have to do with death and taxes, right? No, you're going to be in here as trespassers. Do you notice the words here? Got to be careful I don't trip over something. Here we are. To wit, that God was in Christ, verse 19, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses. If you live in this world, which you do, you will understand an unforgiving world. They're going to blame you for everything. They, they is the them that we're talking about here. The world citizen. He's going to blame you uh, on the, the three areas that I know of. Um, in society, on the job, or from religion. Somehow, you're going to get blamed for something and there's not going to be any forgiveness. You're going to have to work it off. So let's go uh, over to Matthew chapter... What one? Oh yeah, Matthew 6. Matthew chapter 6. This is uh, one we... I mean, I've almost worn out Matthew 6 in my Bible because of the things that are said there. And what is the context? What's the situation here in Matthew 6? Does anybody know that? Matthew, it's a ser did you say Sermon on the Mount? Somebody say Sermon on the Mount? Yeah, okay, yes. That's exactly right. The big man, I mean, pardon the way I said it, Jesus Christ is conducting this. Okay? So, Brother Ray talked about make sure it's important you rightly divide this word. Okay, let's go to over here. And it says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 7, But when ye pray, so we have some instructions on praying. Use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be ye not therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. You know, I believe him about that. That like if I spring a request on him, that he, do you think he knows that ahead of time? I mean, according to this, I, he didn't suddenly go, you know, uh, blind and deaf. I mean, I, I think he know, he knows that. That should help shape our prayer life. Okay, after this manner, so we're going to establish a manner. Therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Amen. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Okay. This world that he's talking about, there's a geographical location called the earth. And it doesn't look so good right here. Maybe the prayers have failed. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Okay. That was a long time ago. And I don't see any delivering of this, this business here. Verse 14. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forget not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. If somebody has a grudge against you in this very dark world, it's very unlikely that you're going to get any kind of a reprieve on that at all. They're going to, the religious element that's in the darkness of this world 
that's going to spring this on you and me, and there's going to be a blame assessed. What does it say concerning our gospel? Redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Do you see, I'm going back over to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, do you not see God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. What choice will you make concerning the prayer life of a believer? What choice will you make if you know this? He's committed to unto us the word of reconciliation. I mean, what kind of a prayer will you have? There's a way to fashion a prayer. You want to pray to God. Good idea. I'm glad about prayer. Do you think you have a prayer? Is it all right to have a prayer with knowledge behind it? Good knowledge. In this very dark world that we're living in, as trespassers, do you think there's a type of prayer that we... I think Paul can instruct us quite well on that. So, this is one of the things that we need to keep in mind. And then he says, uh, God was in Christ. Okay. I drew out this little triangle. You know, what is this the symbol of? The Trinity. Yes, right. Uh, we hear the terms, and I think they can all be proven with the Bible. Um, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Okay, And because of that graphic, it almost looks like He's the best, or He's the number one, and He's number two, and then the Holy Ghost is trailing behind. Do you know that the Holy Ghost directed the ministry there in Acts 13? Wow! I mean, pretty important stuff. He says, separate me, Silas and Paul. Was it Silas? I can't remember. Who was it? Barnabas. Oh, Barnabas and Paul? Or Saul? Or something like that? And for the work that I have them to do, get them separated. Okay, that's the Holy Ghost. Uh, sounds like authority to me. No, these are three in one. And now if somebody came to me and said, I want you to write a 20,000 page uh, word document concerning the Trinity. Okay, I could do that. And I'd turn it in. And the guy would probably say, well, I don't know any more now than I did before. Because that's a hard subject. I could go all through and, and do all that. There's one thing I know about the Trinity and I think it's worth remembering. God the Father and God the Holy Ghost, they're pointing to the Lord Jesus Christ, both of them. That's what you need to know, I think, about the Trinity. They're putting Him on display in the ministry of reconciliation. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto Himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. This, this is revolutionary stuff. If you want to go back into Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, very powerful, wonderful books which have a particular purpose, wonderful. Just understand them. Uh, take the freedom that the Apostle Paul gives us and run with it. Go! Now there's in the ministry of reconciliation because it's not understood because of the big word. you know, People don't really uh, um, study it very much. But there is in the book of Exodus kind of an interesting thing about doing what God wants. I'm going to Exodus chapter number 14. Exodus 14. There's a deliverance of the people. Egypt and their armies are chasing the nation of Israel. 
Okay, I got this book where I got a hard time turning pages. Okay, here we go. Exodus 14, verse 13. And my Bible's got a little subhead over this passage. Redemption by power. Jehovah's victory over pursuing Egypt. Verse 13, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which He will show you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Wow, great promise. The Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. Verse 15, And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. But lift up thine rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. You know what they told them? The Lord God told them, Go! <laughs> Everything's ready! Get moving! And that's exactly the type of thing that God would say to us in the ministry of reconciliation because all things have been made ready for that. And now this, I, I just got to talk to about this, this reconciling of the world here. Yeah. You know, it's kind of a genius thing, you know, and it's kind of, a, this is a understatement to call God a genius. But... <laughs> You have these inhabitants of the world and they're, they're in the darkness. They're under the power of darkness. And what he's done is really kind of amazing in the ministry of reconciliation. He has taken what is known as ambassadors, royal representatives from heaven, and Satan is cursing at them. But he's taken and he's moved them in and he's picking off these poor blind people by that light. He's, he's taken them right out of this darkness and he's rescued them. And Satan can't do anything about it except, you know, persecute us. But the very fact that, kill me, there's somebody to take my place. I'll guarantee you. So I, I think this is really cool. Hey, you know, you got this dark place and it's his, this prince of the power of the earth, his domain influencing all of these people here. But we're going in there with the gospel and we're grabbing them. And you say, well, wait a minute. Not quite, right? Because we're still here. Well, let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 and we'll take a look at something that he's doing. Verse 1, And you hath he quickened, chapter 2, verse 1, who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past we walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. That's another thing you could add here. There's a spirit here doing some control work in that dark place called the world. But I'm going to drop down verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ by grace ye are saved and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's an ongoing thing. This matches up beautifully with what we're going to just see in 2 Corinthians chapter number 5 about something that's ongoing. This is it. You go in there and you steal these people from Satan. And then you raise them up together and put them in heavenly places. That's where you people who have trusted Christ as your personal Savior, that's where you really are. You know, we're, we're suffering down here, but you're up there. You got rescued. You know, and you're, you're now, you've rendered your, your body now as instruments of righteousness doing that work according to the obedience of faith. Okay. I'm going now back to 2 Corinthians. I don't know if I relayed that as well, but I'm really fascinated by that. Entering enemy territory and just grabbing them out of there with that gospel. Bringing the light. <clears throat> 2 
to wit, verse 19, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto Himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Are there any anybody here who is an expert in the English language? You know, do you teach English in school or something like that? Has anybody done any? You, you taught English? I have a degree. You, you do? Okay, well, let me ask you this question. I want to make sure I get this right, so I got to... Oh, yeah, here we go. Have you heard of this tense? Perfect present progressive or also known as... Well, I'm writing all over this thing here. Okay, that says perfect present progressive or perfect present continuous. You see the ING with the art reconciling? It talks about sometime in the past this took place, what Christ did at Calvary. But this tense here tells you that this is ongoing. That's what that's all about. The ING on the end of reconciling. He was reconciling, you know, back there. Guess what? Hasn't stopped. Any point in time. And there's a diagram I found in this book about present perfect progressive. It looks something like that. Here's the point, And we'll just draw, just because of our thing going here, we'll draw the cross. And it looks like this with a little dot at the end. This little dot right here can be any day along the line of the continuum. Tomorrow, let's draw it again. Okay? It's right here now. And so forth. It just continues. That's what that's about. So the reconciling that started back then, this ministry of reconciliation moves on. Okay. I don't want to take too long here. But let's say uh, verse 20. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us. Now there's... I've read a number of books and they all are talking about salvation of the lost and we definitely did talk about that. But do you notice the beseeching there? I, I think that's to believers. Uh, you know, you might disagree with that, but I, I don't beseeching the lost who are in darkness. Um, the thing you got for them is the gospel. But the request, be ye reconciled to God, think like God thinks about this. I mean, this is an urgent, urgent matter. He's even set the stage for you. He's told you the instructions. He's told you the uh, enemy territory, all of this stuff. And Chuck talked about weaponizing. Yeah, we've got it. So we go in there and do the thing that God wants us to do. Okay. Now, we talked about... We talked about um, the ministries of reconciliation and the definition of that. And, and we mentioned that. And I, and I mentioned, I don't really think that hits the mark. That gives you the information, but it really doesn't get to the heart. Because there is a destination for us. You know, I'm not talking about the predestined position, but there's something we ought to keep in mind. What is the ministry of reconciliation about? We, we looked at these four items right here. And, and what's he trying to do by taking away all of these obstructions? And the thing is, trying to decide what is the best place to go. And let's go back to Colossians chapter number 1. And we're just going to reread something. This is the goal. Keep it in your mind when you go to bed tonight, 
if you like before you your head hits the pillow you have a prayer get in your mind about the governmental agencies that are mentioned here that you are going to be a part of this is the big stuff this is the thing that's going it's given to you free you said the ministry of reconciliation has been given to us it, this is a gift that we have here and he talks about Christ in verse 15 who is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of every creature that means something concerning the resurrection for by him and we're going to talk about that in just a minute and then we'll be done for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible and I, I mentioned being able to see invisible things. Okay? You have the privilege, because you believe, of seeing invisible things. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things are created by Him and for Him, and He is before all things, and by Him all things consist. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. Uh, it's a favorite verse to explain Paul's ministry uh, concerning, you know, just this great promise of, in the church, the body of Christ. And it says, and I'm just going over there very quickly. Uh, you can just listen if you want. That's fine. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 9. And the, uh, notice what he's saying. And to make all men see. There's nobody excluded here. The part, regardless of your religion, you know, you could go over to India and Vishnu and all that stuff and it, it, you'll probably get uh, executed. But the very fact is that this is to all men. See what is the fellowship of the mystery. For this, this is the church, the body of Christ which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Okay. Nothing more clear than that who the Creator is. And he's referring to that great mystery which was kept, do you believe it? Was kept hidden until the Apostle Paul made this um, real. So what am I getting at here? What is the purpose of the ministry of reconciliation? What is that end look at? You know, you got the heavenly bodies out there. If, if you go and look at the horizon, all the way up the other night, we got, we don't, I live in a rural area, and so we don't have a whole lot of light pollution. We had a beautiful, clear night, and I was just looking at all those stars. I said, wow. This is really big out there, you know, that type of thing. Well, we're going to be somewhere in that vicinity. And what he's after, and this is the thing that really sticks in my mind. I hope I relay this right. I'm going to erase something. Perfect, pressive, per perfect present, possessive. I'm going to erase this. The blood of Christ made this all possible. Transformation. Top to bottom. He's going to clean up the whole deal. I'm not thinking of Peter now and the new heaven and the new earth. I'm talking about the ministry of reconciliation. He wants transformation in each and every one of us. And that's an ongoing thing. That's something that we ought to really concentrate on because that's what we're going to look like in those heavenly places, a transformed being up there. And you look at these four things here, the individual, the world, Jew and Gentile. By the way, there's religions trying to drag Jewish stuff into our program. There's no, no doubt about it. So it's not just something in time past. 
and then heaven and earth with the target of the heavenly places. And I think that transformation that God has talked about be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Just cleaning out the junk and I want those stellar people understanding what I'm about in the ministry of reconciliation. So, having said that, uh, we pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God. Get your thinking that way. Think about those things. It's an important thing to know that you are going to be in a ruling place of authority in the heavenly places. Let's pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for the opportunity to bring these things forward. We know that thy word is filled with gems and filled with golden nuggets. <clears throat> we thank you that the word of God can be brought to life by our continued study and that we be good ministers of Jesus Christ. In his name that we pray with thanksgiving. Amen.